Gamba grass is a weed of national significance. Its ability to outcompete native species and degrade ecosystems by fueling intense bushfires is considered a key threatening process. Cattle enterprises aside, the most common control for gamba grass is foliar spraying with herbicide, but this method often returns mixed results. This video shows how you can improve your results. Recommendations are relevant for other weeds controlled with foliar spray. A few defining features. Obviously, the size of the plant is something that's really going to stand out, especially when they mature. And a few other key indicators that you really want to look for is this really straight clumping style with a broad flat leaf. A little white mid vein that runs down the middle of the leaves. And then the other real key defining factor is these incredibly hairy stems that you have on the plant. One of the first things you should do to maximise efficiency is to read the product label. This provides instructions on how to maximise success. One of the most important things when you're mixing is that you want to use nice clean water if possible. Um, and important thing is to make sure that you also have a clean jug that isn't full of residues from last time and dirt and things that you might find in your shed. Basically you want to be spraying a plant when it's uh, green and healthy. Um, if it's looking like it's dried out or water stressed, the effectiveness of the herbicide is going to be less. Well, the best time to be spraying gamma grass is uh, early wet season. Spraying should also be avoided in extreme temperature and high winds. Time of the day is always critical when spraying gamma grass, generally because it's the wet season you want to try to avoid the afternoon rain, so the best time of day to be spraying is early in the morning, um, probably around between say 8 o'clock and midday. Spraying should occur before crowns become so dense that herbicide can't penetrate and cover all leaves. The idea is to get it before the plant gets too big. The bigger the plant, the more herbicide you have to spray, the more overspray you generally have and the harder to kill the plant can be because the whole idea of spraying gamber is that you need to wet the whole plant. A lot of people believe that it's just a matter of giving the plants a quick little spray with the gun however you really do need to wet the whole plant. Uh, with these gamber plants it's very important that you wet all the leaves and the big dense tussock you really want to penetrate in there with the spray as much as you can, so, but it's a matter of really wetting the whole plant with the herbicide. Okay, so one of the main points when we're treating gamba grass is to actually the, minimise the spread of seed, so it's very important to try to keep your roadways and your paths clean. It's important to plan follow-up treatments two to four weeks after application to treat plants that were missed, not adequately covered with herbicide or when new tillers or seedlings have emerged. You want to come and check on your work and basically with spraying it's generally an effort that you might have to do two or three times over the wet season. It's always very hard to get every entire plant when you go out the first time. So you'll come out, you'll see the plants that you've got as they should be really standing out dead and yellow in a couple of weeks time. And then yeah, hit anything that you missed and then come back, follow up again probably another three weeks later. 